Thank you to the sponsor of this video, Luminar Neo. So good morning everyone. We are up early again in Chiang Mai and today we're shooting with one of the most important lenses I've bought. It has completely changed my photography and it is the perfect travel companion. Let's go take some pictures and we'll talk more about what that lens is in a little while. So I want to make it very clear on this channel that I am a photographer. I am not a tech gear guy. I do love tech and gear and I have a limited knowledge about lenses, cameras, etc. However, I am a photographer first and a filmmaker. So all my kind of content that I try to make is all based around my experiences. So I kind of just wanted to get that out of the way in case you're unsure about what this channel is because I do get some things wrong. I'm definitely not perfect when it comes to knowing you about all this stuff, but I'm learning and that's what this channel has really done for me is that I've been able to learn more and more about photography, about gear, about filmmaking, about all that stuff. And essentially, you know, it's made me better overall and in essence, you know, help you know other people discover more about film and photography and and all of that jazz yeah so like i said all i want to do is get that out of the way because um this is just an experience based channel just learning on the job So if you haven't guessed already, the lens I'm talking about is the 16 to 55 f 2.8. I bought this lens just over a month now and it has lived on my X-H2S. Wherever that camera goes, so does this lens. And my experience with this lens has made me feel that my photography um, and my image quality has just improved tenfold. I just feel like I'm getting so much more out of my images. I feel my creativity kind of going through the roof a little bit. It might be because I am in Thailand, but I feel like the lens has definitely had an influence. Some say using a zoom lens is lazy, but others say it's convenient. Now it is all down to preference at the end of the day. And the main objective really is to grab the best photo, the best image, the best experience. So optically, this lens is fantastic. It is phenomenal. I think it really has improved my image quality. 
and overall performance. It's nice to have the extra two millimeters. Well, I'm coming from the kit lens in terms of a zoom lens. This lens obviously has its critics and with the price point, it's pretty expensive and it's pretty bulky. Some may argue this is definitely not the best travel lens, but if you wanna up your photography game, I do think that the 16 to 55 really delivers. They call this the big bag of primes and it certainly lives up to its name. It's definitely the next lens you're looking for if you're looking to upgrade. So I quickly wanna talk about the sponsor of this video, Luminar Neo. They are a photo editing software that help you produce high quality images. Every photo you've seen in this video was color graded and edited using this software and we're gonna have a look now at one of the photos I've chosen and show you how I went about grading it. Okay, so let's open up Luminar Neo and choose one of our photos to edit. Let's pick this street scene here. So if, what we can do first is go to our presets and perhaps we could choose a grade we already like, something that I might use, something like urban style here. So we've got a whole case of them here. Old Town, Edinburgh, Toronto, Melbourne, Abbey Street, New York. But I think because we're in Old Town, let's choose Old Town. I think that looks really nice. And we'll leave the impact at 100. So the next thing I do is I head over to the edit and I can see all of the different creative ways I can affect this photo. Um, first thing I'm going to do is crop the image. I could use the composition AI, but I'm not too sure. Um, I kind of want the whole photo as I had it, so I'm going to leave it. So let's undo that and come back and maybe click back on and just maybe correct the horizon alignment. There we go. That's That's much better. And apply that. And the next thing I like to do is then go into develop. This is where you'll be very familiar if you're used to color grading and turning your photo into something special. This is where all the controls are. So as you can see, we have things like exposure, you have contrast, which they call smart contrast. You have the highlights and you have the shadows. There are also the black and whites, the curves, color, sharpness, noise reduction, optics and transform. Like I said, I just kind of play with these until I'm happy with the image. I think the grade of the old town has really given it something already, but let's just get it to a place where I feel I'm happy. Let's have a look at the temperature here. No, definitely let's undo that and leave it where it was. I think it was perfect as it is. Maybe try the white balance. That's a bit too cool. I definitely want to go back to that old town preset. These presets are really very good. Um, probably some of the best presets I've played with in a long time. Here are your curves where I definitely like to have a tiny S curve just to bring up the highlights and the shadows just to give more depth to the image. So there are the basics. The next thing I always like to do is a little bit of masking. Um, when I use the mask AI, I can tap that. What it will do is find the sky and allow me to bring the exposure down and not be too overly exposed. Um, I'll also just bring down the highlights just to give it a bit more blue and um, maybe a bit too much. Let's bring that back and that looks good. Just a little bit more maybe. Just, so I don't want it to be too dark. I want it to be kind of um, very believable as a photo. I don't want it too overly uh, played with. And then I like to get another linear gradient. And I just want to make that side of the street much darker. As you see, I just, I just line it up here. And then I will play with the exposure and the highlights. So I'll just bring the exposure down on that. I think that's looking good. Bring down the highlights again and maybe the shadows bring bring those shadows down so it looks a little bit more a little bit more contrast but still keeping the overall tone of the image okay so that there is the before and after a real big contrast you can also do use this sweeping kind of before and after um, technique which really shows every part of the photo changing from one to the other i really like this this is very cool very cool to show so something else you can do is you can see over here you can add layers 
So you can add things like flares, light leaks. As you can see, you can choose the opacity of it. You can mask it. You can do all kinds of things with these layers. Um, here are some flares and uh, you can really see how it could add a very cool effect. You can play with it as much as you want. It's You've got so many options. So now I'm going to export this photo and just like in any other editing software, you just, you know, you give it a name and you save it in and then just save it in your folder. Um, pretty bog standard. There's not really too much to this. And like I said, I color graded all of these images in this video with Luminar Neo. So a big thank you to Luminar Neo for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in getting Luminar Neo yourself, use my discount code J10 to get yourself 10% off at the checkout. I think it's well worth the purchase and I like how you can pay for this as a one-off instead of a monthly subscription. Anyway, let's head back to the streets of Chiang Mai and look further at why this lens is so good. As for video, this lens is okay. It doesn't have any optical image stabilization, but if you're using something like the X-H2S, then you're probably gonna have not too many issues. Um, it does have a constant aperture of 2.8, which is really beneficial when the kit lens has a variable aperture. The build quality of this thing is magnificent and it is weather sealed. There are a lot of pros to owning this lens, but the biggest pro is just the image quality. The photographs I'm able to produce just have leveled up my game. And as I'm taking photography much more seriously these days, I really want to be getting the sharpest images possible, which gives me the opportunity if I ever want to print, because you want to be capturing the best possible image. It's kind of funny because throughout my travels, I've constantly been using two lenses. The most expensive lens I own, and the cheapest, which is the TT Artisans 27mm. That lens is just so fun to use. It's got bags of character. You know, it's a pancake lens. It's just perfect for street photography. And the other one is this one, the 16 to 55. I haven't brought my kit lens with me because this was the lens that I was gonna use for predominantly most of my work. I'm glad I did. And as I take more and more photos, I'm just falling more and more in love with this lens. My only real gripe with this lens is the focus ring. It's, it's, it's really quite small and because it's a focus by wire lens, it's, it's not mechanical. So unlike something like my Sigma 18-35, focusing manually is, is not, as, not as easy, not as smooth, not as achievable. But it's, you can still obviously do it, but um, when you compare it to a lens like that, um, one that I use as a workhorse, that one wins out. Let me know your thoughts on this lens and whether you think it's purchasing or not, or if it's good for travel. As always, let's make some waves and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.